Well, this is Mobien. This is dedicated to the gallant heroes of the Nigerian Biafra War and IPO families all over the world. I remember the Nigerian Biafran war mm, In the thickness of the Biafra genocide Hey, one man revived the vanishing hope to life Ah, uh, let the great Biafran army the fight And they were singing out Holy, 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 holy published please i want it to be published tonight immediately i want it published on my page i want people to understand a letter that was written in the times of london july 15 1998 i repeat the times of london wednesday july 15 1998 let me read it for you it was written by a white man. You understand? Written by a white man. His name is Peter Smithers. Peter, P-E-T-E-R, as you have Peter. Smithers is S-M-I-T-H-E-R-S. He wrote it. He was writing to the British government. He's a white man. He's British. As I said before, the British people are very conscientious. An average Briton is a nice human being. An average Englishman. An average Scottish man, an average Welsh man, an average Irish man, they are wonderful, beautiful people. But once you take them away from the streets of London, or Belfast, or Glasgow, or Edinburgh, the case may be, or Cardiff, and you put them in the foreign and commonwealth office, dealing with colonial matters or dealing with Africa, they turn into beasts, they turn into monsters, I don't know why. Somebody wrote a letter. It's called the Nigerian Lesson. This is in the Times of London. As I repeat, Times of London, Wednesday, July 15, 1998. Somebody kindly sent it to me, and I'll read it so that the whole world may hear. This is from Sir Peter Smithers. He He's a knight of the realm. The proper sir, not the sir you have in the zoo. When you read that, come up with a chair knight, you know. These are the proper, these are the, the knights of the realm of the British Empire. Now listen. Sir, I'm now reading verbatim the letter written by Sir Peter Smithers to the Times newspaper of London. Listen, Sir, 
during the negotiations for the independence of Nigeria, the view of the Secretary of State at the time, at that time, with which I agreed, was that in Nigeria, we should attempt to put together a large and powerful state with ample material resources, which will play a leading part in the affairs of the continent and of the world. This was attractive, but it involved forcing several different ethnic and cultural groups into a single political structure. The negotiations were complex and very difficult. The chief problem, as I recall or I remember, relating significantly to the control of the police and of the military. Listen carefully, please. In the retrospect of 40 years, it is clear that this was a grave mistake, which has cost many lives and will probably continue to do so. It would have been better to establish several smaller states in a free trade area. Even some British people realized after 40 years of failed experiment called Nigeria, Sir Peter Smithers, who worked in the zoo colonial desk, he is writing, we wanted to build a country that is so big that we can control, more or less. And that very big country, our problem then was who to give the police and the army to. And they gave it to Fulani. The man is now saying, with hindsight, after 40 years, many he wrote this thing in 1998, oh, not 2020, 1998. This white man knew that Fulanese were using army and police to kill people in 1998. He said, after 40 years of this experiment called Zoo Nigeria, that they created, that it is a mistake. White man is a mistake. Now, let, he said, we should have gone for small, small states. Now, this goes back to our bully conference. Our people should be able to reason. This was the reason why Britain said no to our bully. Because our bully was about confederation. Ojuku went to Aburi, a great confederation, came back home in Enugu, and go and launched a war. Instead of implementing that Aburi that would have allowed smaller, smaller nations to emerge, but in a free trade zone called Nigeria, go one said no because British told him to say no. Because Britain wanted a large country that has influence in Africa that they can control, but to achieve that control, they needed to place the military and the police in the hands of the Janjaweed, Fulani, Miyeti Allah. And that was what they did. And that is why we are suffering till today. This man said people are dying. Let me continue. In, in exculpation, it must be said that we did not then have the examples of the collapse of Yugoslavia and of Soviet Union before our eyes. In other words, the man is saying that Nigeria, the zoo you have, Nigeria, Nigeria to some of you, is the same thing as Yugoslavia, the same thing as Soviet Union, and it is bound to collapse. That is what this man is lamenting in 1998. He is saying we did not have the benefit of the collapse of Soviet Union or Yugoslavia to tell us what to do in the case of the animals in the zoo, Nigeria. Are you listening? This is from a British man, a, a high-ranking officer. He is a sir, he's a knight of the realm, Sir Peter Smithers. I will continue. It should now be clear for all but the willfully blind, this is how intelligent this, this man is saying it is clear to everybody, to both cockroach and rat, okay, Morticia, everybody knows it is clear unless you're living in denial. Unless you are a denier of the truth, unless you are foolish, this is from a white man, please, not me. Unless you are willfully blind to see that it is extremely dangerous to force diverse racial and social entities into a single rigid political structure such as that which is being built upon the foundation of the Maastricht Treaty. This man was saying the reason why Britain left the EU, the reason why Britain opposed, some of you don't know what is Maastricht Treaty, but I will tell you some other day. It was a treaty of European Union that Britain refused to sign. This man is saying the same mistakes of the past we are about to repeat. What is that mistake? To willfully 
join together. He, he said it is extremely dangerous. A white man is saying is that Nigeria, as it exists today, Nigeria, is extremely dangerous because you are forcing diverse racial and social entities into a single rigid political structure that is unsustainable. Now, recent history, according to this man, Peter Smithers, sir, of course, he's a knight of the realm. Recent history suggests that it will, it will be best to complete the development of the common market and to call a halt to political integration in Europe. These are the people of Brexit. They don't want Britain to be a part of one big political superstructure. The man is saying the same thing we built in Nigeria that is costing lives. And who is this man that wrote this? He said, I am, sir, your obedient servant, sir Peter Smithers. Listen to his title. Parliamentary Private Secretary to the Minister of State and the Secretary of State in the Colonial Office from 1952 to 1959. And he lives in Vico Makote in Switzerland. Are you listening? These are people that knew that putting a country together, people of that is diverse social backgrounds. In Igbo land, am I the same thing with the Fulani man? The answer is no. I am related to Ethic, to Bibu. I'm related to, to, to Asian, as they call it, I am related to economic the people who are there. I am, I have relationship with Robo. I know I can relate to Isoko culture. I can relate to Ishekiri culture. But can I relate to, to, to Fulani culture? The answer is no. Maybe even to an extent, I can relate to Yoruba culture, Yoruba culture, to an extent. But do you think I can ever relate to, to Fulani culture? Of course, the answer is no. Because Fulani runs a feudal system, a rank the system, where one big man stays at the top and gives you tea in the morning and asks you to go and stone somebody and you can't do it. That's what they do. Do you see the difference between an egalitarian society and one that is so structured that other will come from the emir or from the sadiki or whoever? We are not like that. That is not democracy. And that value system was what the Fulanis brought to us all. These are the things that your so-called social scientists and your political analysts don't understand. What is playing out in Asurok today is the same Janjaweed feudal system, where one person stays at the top and just keeps distributing money that they did not work for. Money that they didn't, they didn't earn. That is what is happening in the zoo. That same thing was what they brought to the center in Asurok, and some of you are too blind to see it. When we tell you that the zoo, Nigeria, Nigeria, is unworkable, try to understand there is no nation on this earth where you have divergent values, divergent cultures and traditions welded together into a nation is a lie. For freedom taking longer And cause of that you tend to feel so low I know our freedom is your greatest hunger I thought of Biafra keeps your heart aglow Take
We shine a bright light the world will see We will touch the skies And set up a throne on high And run without God Just hold on